the hits keep on coming with NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. According to the latest update the telescope has just discovered not one, but two of the earliest and most distant galaxies ever seen continuing to break the records it previously set. The furthest galaxy Jade's RGSZ-14 is seen as it was a mere 290 million years after the Big Bang existing at least 100 million years earlier than the previous record holder. That means that if the universe is 13.8 billion years old it means we're observing the galaxy when the cosmos was only 2% of its current age. The light James Webb saw from this primordial galaxy has been traveling for 13.5 billion years on its way to reach us. What's interesting is that Jade's GSZ-14 isn't alone either. It was discovered along with another galaxy Jade's GSZ-14-141 that is almost as far away and takes second place in the ranking of the earliest galaxies ever seen by humanity. The announcement of the discoveries is the latest development in the ongoing investigation of Cosmic Dawn that the $10 billion telescope has facilitated as part of the Jade's program. Jade's aims to provide vital insights into the ways in which stars' gas and black holes were evolving in primordial galaxies when the 13.8 billion year old universe was very young. According to team member and Kavli Institute for Cosmology scientist Francesco Duino, these galaxies join a small but growing population of galaxies from the first half billion years of cosmic history where we can really probe the stellar populations and the distinctive patterns of chemical elements within them. But Jade's GSZ-14 isn't just remarkable for how distant it is from Earth and how early it existed in the cosmos. With a width of around 1600 light-years across this cosmic dawn galaxy is also remarkable for how big and bright it is. The extreme brightness of Jade's GSZ-14 and the fact this luminosity is powered by young stars means this galaxy represents the most striking evidence for the rapid formation of large massive galaxies in the early universe found thus far. Jade's team member and University of California Santa Cruz researcher Ben Johnson added that Jade's RGSZ-14 shows that galaxy formation in the early universe was very rapid and intense. The Webb telescope is adept at seeing early galaxies thanks to the high infrared sensitivity of its instruments, particularly its primary imager, the near-infrared camera. Light leaves these cosmic dawn galaxies with a wide range of wavelengths similar to light from galaxies that are closer to the Milky Way. It is the journey of billions of years that transforms this light into low-energy and long-wavelength light in the near-infrared and infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The very fabric of space is expanding and as light passes through it its wavelength is stretched along with it. This causes the light to shift down to the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum hence the name for this phenomenon redshift. Galaxies that are farther away have to cross more space which is being stretched as it expands before their light reaches us and thus that light experiences more redshift. Redshift denoted as Z can therefore be used to measure the distance to celestial objects with a known spectrum. Because light takes a finite amount of time to travel this distance can be used to calculate how long ago these galaxies existed as we see them. Jade's GSZ-14 has a redshift of Z equals 14.32 while the previous most distant galaxy Jade's GSZ-13 has a redshift of Z equals 13.2 which placed it as existing 400 million years after the Big Bang. Clearly this newly found galaxy has absolutely smashed that record with James Webb seeing back in time by another 100 million years or so. As Jade's collaboration team member Stefano Carniani of the Scuola Normale Superior said Jade's RGSZ-14 now becomes the archetype of this phenomenon. It is stunning that the universe can make such a galaxy in only 300 million years. Of course not everything about Jade's GSZ-14 was immediately clear to the Jade's team and some elements could confuse our picture of the early cosmos. When it was first spotted the primordial galaxy was so close to a closer foreground galaxy that the team suspected they could be celestial neighbors. This idea was dispelled in October last year when the Jade's crew spent five days performing a deep analysis of Jade's RGSZ-14 with NIRCAM. The application of filters that are specifically tailored to identify early galaxies confirmed the extreme distance to Jade's RGSZ-14. In the words of Jade's team member and University of Arizona researcher Kevin Hanlein we just couldn't see any plausible way to explain this galaxy as being merely a neighbor of the more nearby galaxy. The galaxy also surprised its discoverers because its light is even redder than expected. That is because the light from Jade's GSZ-14 is being reddened by dust within it that will become the building blocks of stars that will help this galaxy grow even larger. 
Another surprise was the discovery of oxygen in Jade's RGSZ-14. Elements heavier than hydrogen and helium are forged by stars during their lifetimes and then distributed through galaxies when these stars explode. The observation of oxygen in this galaxy could indicate that at least one generation of stars has already lived and died in this very early galaxy. As Jade's researcher Jake Helton of Stewart Observatory and the University of Arizona explained all of these observations together tell us that Jade's RGSZ-14 is not like the types of galaxies that have been predicted by theoretical models and computer simulations to exist in the very early universe. Given the observed brightness of the source, we can forecast how it might grow over cosmic time and so far we have not found any suitable analogues from the hundreds of other galaxies we've observed at high redshift in our survey. Thus Webb's newest discovery has profound implications for the predicted number of bright galaxies we see in the early universe. More fascinatingly just a few days ago astronomers using the Webb telescope have found what they say are three of our universe's earliest galaxies spotted actively forming when the cosmos was just 400 million to 600 million years old. In Webb's images this galactic trio resembles fuzzy red smudges feeding on nearby helium and hydrogen over millions of years. It is these elements that sustain such galaxies as they grow helping to shape them into the familiar ellipses and spirals we see across the cosmos. According to study lead author Kasper Elms who is an astrophysicist at the Cosmic Dawn Center in Denmark you could say that these are the first direct images of galaxy formation that we've ever seen. Whereas James Webb has previously shown us early galaxies at later stages of evolution here we witness their very birth and thus the construction of the first star systems in the universe. But while these stunning discoveries demonstrate that James Webb is reaching beyond its primary mission goals they like countless previous observations continue to challenge our understanding of the universe. The story of cosmology given to us by the standard model says that about 400,000 years after the Big Bang, electrons and photons found each other to create the first hydrogen atoms. Before this they had been running free along with the photons that would soon become the cosmic microwave background radiation. Once this recombination into hydrogen occurs the universe is largely composed of a fairly smooth gas of these atoms with some helium around too and the leftover background radiation. Now gravity can get to work within perturbation small regions of overdensity in the hydrogen gas and slowly collapse them to form the first stars. It is inside these first stars which are formed only of hydrogen and helium that nuclear fusion begins to forge all the heavy elements we know today. Elements like carbon and nitrogen play an important role in the story of galaxy formation because these are the elements that can absorb heat from surrounding gas and emit photons that cool that gas. This cooling process will be critical in helping gas coalesce into galaxies. Eventually these first generation stars explode and the resulting supernovae seed the gas that surrounds them with heavy elements. Each supernova along with black holes which are also forming pumps ultraviolet radiation into the universe. This strips electrons from hydrogen atoms making the universe more and more transparent to UV radiation. After the universe has run through a few generations of stars there are enough heavy elements and UV radiation around to feed the formation of galaxies. Stars and vast quantities of gas collapse into gravitationally bound entities to pull these first galaxies together. This is a good story and observations confirm key parts of it. The problem comes when it is placed within the cosmological context of the expanding universe. The standard model of cosmology gives astronomers a way to link the observed distances to objects expressed in redshift with their age relative to the Big Bang expressed in years. Distances are measured by observation and cannot be tinkered with. Age on the other hand comes from a theoretical story. We take our models of an expanding universe guided by Einstein's general relativity and pour them into our understanding of matter as expressed in the standard model of particle physics. These tell us how a distance or a redshift correlates with an age of time since the Big Bang. So what is the problem? Well almost as soon as JWST the James Webb Space Telescope was turned on it found galaxies at redshifts and hence ages much farther back than the standard model of cosmology predicts. Here is how the problem plays out within these images, we are looking very very far away. Since looking to a particular distance means looking back in time, we are also looking very very far back in time. But the universe has a beginning called the Big Bang. The age-redshift relation which comes from the standard model tells us how to convert an observed distance into a time after the Big Bang. 
but there seems to be a mismatch between how old these first galaxies appear to be and how long ago the age redshift relation tells us. They should have existed. Now this is not to say there is a problem with the Big Bang. There is no other coherent evidence-based model of the expanding universe that gives an alternative story. All of the astrophysics involved in the story of the early universe is also fine. The problem seems to be with the age-redshift relation predicted by the standard model of cosmology and the state of our observations. Even before JWST a suite of findings has hinted that the current story of the expanding universe is running out of road. So what does this mean in the next few years cosmologists will need to go back to their calculations to build a new picture of the universe either incorporating the new JWST data or by adjusting the age-redshift relation to fit it. Both possibilities will lead us to an exciting new understanding of the universe's origins. And who knows what further surprises are in store as the Webb Telescope continues its mission as former ESA director and Nobel laureate John Mather aptly put it with each new discovery we are rewriting the textbooks of astronomy. One thing is clear our understanding of the cosmos will never be the same again.